What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday. In this week's edition of Triathlon Newsday, the best U.S. triathletes of 2018 are announced, the best Ironman races of 2018 are announced, and fast racing gets underway for 2019. Man, did they move! <laughs> What's up, triathletes? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day, where every single Tuesday, as long as I'm not traveling, which I will be next week, we talk about goings on all around the triathlon world. Make sure you stick around to the end, where everyone's favorite part of Triathlon News Day, that's a story from the Trainiac community, is shared. And as always, full links to everything we talk about will be in the description below. Now, let's start off with Ironman announcing their Athletes' Choice Awards for a lot of the best ofs for Ironman and half Ironman distance racing. I got some highlights here. The best overall swim in full Ironman, Ironman New Zealand, half Ironman, Santa Cruz. Best overall bike in full Ironman, Sweden. And the best overall bike in half Ironman was a tie between St. Poulton and Norway. Best overall run, Full Ironman, Ironman Wisconsin, which is very strange because people will normally be going through a lot of pain after that bike. And half Ironman, the best run was Ironman Taupo. And in those rankings, they've got a lot more Athletes' Choice Awards with like best venue experience, best town, would recommend to a friend. So link to everything will be in the description below. Now with more best of news, USAT, USA Triathlon announced their Elite Athlete of the Year awards and the Elite Short Course Athlete of the Year that was most well known was ITU athlete Katie Zafiris. Also on the non-drafting side, our pal Sarah True won Female Non-Drafting Athlete of the Year and Ben Canute won non-drafting male athlete of the year. Way to go. And again, everyone that was announced as award winner for the USAT Athlete of the Year awards linked in the description below. The World Triathlon Series got underway and this is the series of races that are the ITU organized races, but it is like the premier race series that happens over the course of the year. This is what athletes accumulate points for which then determines the world champion at the end of the year. Now, both of the winners start off 2019 the way that they ended 2018. Mario Mola won the men's side in 52 minutes flat for a sprint race, racing a 5K race best of 14 minutes flat. Katie Zafiris did basically the exact same thing, winning the women's race in 50. 531. She also had the fastest run of the day going 1609, proving that in triathlon, you run for dough. Biking's just for show. That sucks for me because I'm better at biking than running. Half Ironman racing was underway at Argentina in the Half Ironman 70.3 Bariloche race, and it was won by Santiago and Senko in 40220. Ooh, that's all right. I think I even pronounced it right. Haley Chura won the women's race in 4.34.32, and in both cases, it was a fairly dominant performance on the men's and the women's side. Both of these winners won their respective divisions by about seven minutes over second place. So very dominant races. Congratulations to both of you. In podcast world, we have been banking up some podcasts. We've had some really good ones. We just published the podcast with Brenton Ford from Effortless Swimming. Really good chat, not just about how he learned how to be Brenton from Effortless Swimming, but how age group athletes and pros alike can improve their swimming and make it effortless. We also just yesterday recorded one with Kesa Sally 
two-time fifth place finisher in Kona, last year seventh place finisher in Kona, and tomorrow morning, before we head off to Puerto Rico, we will be chatting with Sebastian Weber, who is the head coach of many pro cycling teams, and he was the person that appeared in the How to Bike with Cam Worf Masterclass, which is just about to go live, by the way, talking about exactly how many seconds people can save with wheels with different rubber with a helmet with a skin suit with cleaning up their bike i really like chatting with him while i was in la working with cam and hopefully you like this podcast so go check it out now let's get into the trainiac story of the day it's a good one this one got me my name is anthony rosales better known as rosie i was diagnosed with ms on april 11th 2015. Leading up to this diagnosis, I was feeling a numb feeling in my lips, which led to constant bloody lip due to biting it. The numbness and pain developed in my right arm, and an MRI confirmed my physician's suspicion it was multiple sclerosis. I wondered, is this a death sentence? Could it be fixed? What can I do to fight this? After intense research, one critical thing that I could do to avoid or at least delay relapses of my new MS buddy was fitness and proper eating habits. My wife and I came up with a plan of action. I forced myself to eat healthier and start running, which led to mud runs, half marathons, a marathon, and then my favorite of all, triathlon. In this journey, I lost 140 pounds, going from 412 to my current 270. In October of 2017, I decided to attempt a full Ironman and this would be done with limited experience in triathlon, having only done just one sprint and one Olympic distance race. With lots of intense training, I hit the ground running to attempt my full Ironman. Unfortunately, hitting the ground is what I did. I passed out at mile 140.4, just 0.2 miles away from the finish. I had 15 to 20 minutes to make it to the finish line on time, but I simply could not find the finish line. There were no signs pointing to the right direction and no crowds to be seen that late. I never liked blaming anything on my MS, so I will say I overexerted myself and got confused. I will be back and I am already registered for Ironman Texas in April. I am ready. I want to show my fellow MS family around the world that nothing is impossible. I will tackle as many events as this ugly disease allows me. My promise to my family, friends, supporters, and of course myself, is that I will not stop. Like it says on some shirts that I made, quitting is not an option. I live by that tagline until I am no more. Thank you for sharing, Taryn. Anthony Rosales Rosie. Thank you for sharing, Rosie. Goodness, when I started reading this, I was like, oh, well, another story about some great weight loss and somebody overcoming adversity with triathlon. But in this case, he didn't overcome it. He's working to overcome it and excited about that work to overcome it. So thank you for sharing, Rosie. Because like that, that's the thing. I love when people are excited about the journey of doing this, not the outcome. Because we only have ownership of the process. We don't have any ownership of the outcome, as Rosie demonstrated. But the fact that he is getting down into the nitty gritty and loving the process and the journey of getting there, and that's what success is to him. I love it. Thanks, Rosie. If anyone wants to get their story shared here on Triathlon News Day, we want to hear from you. We only have like one story in the banks of stories right now. So email them in, please. We love them. They help motivate everyone here. Send them in to Taryn at triathlonterran.com. And if you aren't yet subscribed and you love these Triathlon News Days, hit that subscribe button below. That was a good one. Rosie. Oh, man. Good on you. Good on you. Later, Trainiacs.